Welcome back to A7 Podcast. Today, we have a special guest. The three Bs. The big, the bold, the beautiful, Jean Marie. Jean, tell the people a little about yourself. <laughs> What's up, Habibis? It's the one, the only, Jean Marie. Ahlo, sahla, bonsoir, bonjour, bonjour. Let's get this fucking party started. <laughs> you want to tell Ow. the people a little bit about you? Like, tell them about what you do, how they can find you. Nah. <laughs> They're gonna find me. Don't worry. Well, let's talk. Let's tell them what you do. Let's tell them a little bit about what you do here in Los Angeles in this industry. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm the biggest bitch that lived, standing at six feet tall, five thousand pounds. No, I'm just <laughs> um, but no, I do music. What kind of music? Only bad bitch music. Only fun music. Nice. That's not all you do. Go on. Say everything. See, I'm not supposed to. They already know. They already know what time it is. That's like Kobe Bryant don't didn't introduce himself. They know he's a basketball player. I'm just a big bitch, and I make music. <laughs> well, let's let's go a little bit down that path. I know that you, you have a lot to say in your life. There's been a lot of climax in your life. Um, so, oh yeah. <laughs> so let's get back to the roots. How about that? Let's start from the beginning. What life experiences brought you here? Here in LA, here in life, here in general. What, what have you gone through to put you in the situation that you're on today? Um, well, uh, when I was mm, very, very young, I was in an arranged marriage. Oh, wow. And my family shipped me off to the United Arab Emirates, which is like where Dubai is. Yes. And they told me I had to like put a cover on my face, cover my hair. And I had just finished, like, I had just won some beauty pageants, like, swimsuit competition, beauty pageants. And so to go from, like, wearing a bikini and being, like, an all-American high school sweetheart to then, like, go to the Middle East and have all my freedom taken away, it fucked me up. Gave you that rage, you could say. Yeah. And it kind of just made me, like... I was always very modest, but I think it just kind of made me like, Rah. it lit something within. Yeah. Like it just made me go off the deep end. And then, um, I started doing a lot of drugs. Oh, wow. I started drinking a lot and I was in college. I got a full scholarship and then I married this guy because he needed, he needed a green card. <laughs> Oh, man. Maybe we shouldn't tell the uh, immigration about this. <laughs> yeah, what's the social security well, number? No, I, well, no. Well, what ended up happening was I um, I got it annulled. Oh, okay. okay. So, because, like, then I realized that I was young, dumb, and slow, and that he couldn't scam me. <laughs> so, because, you know, I caught him in bed with a dude. Mm. So I was like, oh, he doesn't even like me. He just wants a green card. Yeah, that kind of would fuck with you, right? Mentally, especially being married. So you caught him with a dude? Yeah. Like in the act? Yeah. Was it traumatizing? No. I would be. I Did it stink? I, I like gay men. Uh. <laughs> I, think I, I think I'm more attracted to gay men. It's That's what gets me in trouble. But, but isn't that like, like hard? Hmm? Like you're trying to switch them? You're trying to save them? No. <laughs> I just, they, they don't, I think it's that they don't want to admit, like, they know and I know, but they don't want to. They don't want to admit that they're gay. Yeah, but anyway, oh, okay, that's okay. another story. Well, that's a, it's a hidden gay. I, I know what you're talking about. I had a coworker like that. He was married, three kids, but he was gay as hell. <laughs> you just, have a couple of friends like that, I met. Yeah, like the voice gay. and everything, like you know the high pitched voice, like the feminine walk. But they got a wife and kids. I fucking love it. I don't know. I love a sparkly straight. <laughs> Is that what they're called? No, because they're not straight. <laughs> But I love a sparkly straight, like a like a straight guy that's like super feminine. I think that's hot. Who would be an example of that? Noah Prince. Beck. <clears throat> the Prince is gay. You think Prince Drake? <coughs> Do you think is Drake is a is a sparkly straight? Interesting. So you're telling me Drake is a sparkly straight? How about Prince? I don't know. I don't know them personally. I just have met one of them, but. I will say, a sparkly straight, there's many. That's something new to me. I learned something new today. It's I, like metrosexual. No, metrosexual is one thing. 
but Spartan, it's a mix of metro close. and yeah. like just being in tune and tapped in with your a little bicarious no that's bicarious <laughs> sparkly straight is just like you don't mind acting a little girly interesting you don't mind twerking whoa okay that's a problem <laughs> who's your favorite sparkly straight Oh, you just said a Drake, huh? Other than Drake. Other than Drake, no, yeah. No, I didn't say that was my favorite. Because who's your favorite? Your favorite yeah. Noah Beck. That's right. Who's Noah Beck? Yeah, that's a good question. I have a lot. I have a long roster of Sparkly Streets. <laughs> you should got an all-star team already set up. <laughs> Let's go. We're ready for playoffs. It's fantasy football. <laughs> Is there a lot of Sparkly Streets in Miami? Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Everyone. So, in Miami... What happened that made you want to get out of there? If you look, like, it seems like a place that you would love a lot. I love Miami. Miami's great. <laughs> Miami can suck a dick. Ooh. Ooh. No, I got in a lot of trouble in Miami. Um, I mean, I lived there most of my life, but like I said, I started getting into drugs and I started selling them more oh. than I was doing them. And I got set up mm. and I went to jail. No way. Mm-hmm. How was jail? These girls were eating poon for some ramen noodles. Yeah, it's pretty bad in the girls' jails. <laughs> it's bad, too, because they would, like, try to play with me. Like, they would try to um, talk shit to me and say that, you know, because I'm not ugly and I'm not fat. So the only thing they could do is be like, oh, that's a man. No, bitch, my pussy bleeds just like yours. Like, shut the fuck up. So they'd say little things like that. And it used to really piss me off. And then I just realized it's because they know I'm better than them. It's jealousy a little bit. They just know I'm better. But also couldn't have been, you know, like they say the first rule of prison is like, okay, when you first go to prison, find the biggest, biggest baddest, baddest person <laughs> in there and try to fuck them up. Yeah. And, 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 and have women's too. prison, biggest, baddest, be- most beautiful yeah. women in the yard and beat her up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, nah, every time someone tried to fight me, I would just like figure out a way to get away from them. Because I had to get the hell out of there. Yeah, you didn't want to. You didn't want to spend too much time in there. There's no way. I had no bail, no bond, which means I needed to stay away from everybody. Completely understand where you're coming from. You just want to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Yeah, like move on to the next thing, right? So, so what happened when you got out? When I got out, I would say <laughs> I said I need a sugar daddy. <laughs> Because all these bills are behind. Jose was looking for a sugar daddy not so long ago. Sugar mama. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got one. Um, back then, there was Backpage. So I went on Backpage, and I said, uh, who wants to give me 5K to lick these toes? And I found, of course, I found a, an Arab guy. Wow. He was so short. Oh, man. Was that interesting? Yeah, he bought me a Rolex on our first date. Oh, wow. He meant business. Yeah, so I've seen the finer things in life, but it's not what I want. Did he lick your toes, though? It was part of the contract. Well, let's see. (laughs) He bought me everything I wanted. He paid for everything I needed and wanted. But then he tried to kill me, so there's that. Oh, wow. Well, how did you get out of that? (laughs) Well, I was on probation because, remember, I had just got out and... We had taken a trip to L.A. because we were still living in Miami. And um, I had a show at the W. I was performing. And I just remember some guy sent me their dick pic on Snapchat. And oh, I damn. opened it. And he, like, went for my throat. And then called the police on me and said I was trying to hurt him. Because he knows I'm on probation. He was trying he was to crazy. set you up even further. Yeah, yeah he was trying to set me up. I had, like... Christian Louboutin heels on. I jumped out of the balcony. This is at the Beverly Hills Plaza Hotel, probably like the third floor. I jumped out of the balcony in heels and I started running and I called my family and they're like, you didn't do anything wrong. Don't run like you're going to go back to jail. So I went to the front of the hotel and the police were there and they were like, yeah, you have cuts and like, like I had like bruises all over me. Or, like, they were about to be bruises. Like, just, just markings marks, yeah. everywhere. And they took him instead. Yeah, it's usually how it goes in the lane. And then I made him pay me off to not press charges. Oh, wow. See, she's a smart woman. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting. So, you never answered the question about the toes. 
Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to circle back to that, you know. We don't want to leave the audience in mystery. Listen, there's three uh there's three most googled body parts. The first one is ass. Mm-hmm. The second one is titties. And the third one is feet. You're welcome. So Nothing to say. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I did not prepare for this. I thought I was just going to come up to the top of my head. It, it's tough. But but anyways, going back to getting out, getting set up. I mean, that's traumatic on its own, right? Experiencing jail, then coming out, living the fine things in life, enjoying life for a little bit, then letting it all tear down again. But then right before it tears down, you bring it back up again because you got paid off. Now, now what you do with that? Where did that? Well, no, the, I stayed with him. Oh, you stayed with him. And then he did it again. Oh, damn. And then I found out he was bipolar because I guess I just didn't look at the medication. Oh, shit. Now you got to check the medications. Well, I you, didn't check because I, I'm just so into what I'm doing. I just don't care what everyone else is doing. I really mind my business in life. You're in your bubble. Well, I had gotten pregnant with twins. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Really? No, like, serious. Did you like have an ultrasound and everything? Yeah. Holy shit, dude. I found out on 11 11, November 11th. I have a question. They might have been triplets, but they only found two. There's heartbeats. three things, but there's two heartbeats. Oh, damn. So, like, three so it embryos, could have been three. Three embryos and two heartbeats. Yeah, it could have been three, maybe, but I, I, I didn't want to wait and find out. I said, fuck that and fuck that guy. Damn. My body, my choice. No, obviously, like, if you weren't ready for kids, I'm, I, you know, there's a lot of abortion bullshit It wasn't about on. not being ready. He's just trash. Yeah. That's just true. because he bought me everything, it doesn't mean he's a good person. No, I agree. I agree. You want to find happiness, too, right? That, that's what marriage should be. Happiness is within myself. I'm a strong believer that you have control of your own happiness. Not sure. with these hoes. <laughs> but now, um, after the Airbnb. You were you were moving around Florida doing Airbnbs or is it here in LA? Miami. Miami. So in Miami, what what got you out of there? I think it was just time. My my dream wasn't to live in Miami. My dream was to live in LA and do music. Were you doing music in Miami as well? Yeah, but not at the level that I'm doing it right now. So you've been going as Jean Marie for a while. A long time. A long time. So, Jean Marie is, is obviously part of who you are, but as well as, as a persona, right? So oh, that's my real name. It, right, of course, I'm saying, oh. but, but the, the rap icon, like the whole imagery behind all that, is, is obviously you don't, you don't. This is part of you, but in a sense, it's also someone who you've made up in a sense to make music. I mean, it's all me, but I'm not always on a hundred, like. Everything that I rap about has happened in my life at one point. Okay, okay. Maybe it's not happening right now, but it has happened. So you're you're, you're writing about life, expressing life. Yeah. Pay my rent for a year, just saw pics of my toes. That's true. Oh, damn. <laughs> no, that's true. I, I see where you're coming from. You're, you're, you're rapping life. Yeah. But now now part of this persona like that I, I'm calling persona is um, the outfits. The, uh, the 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 dancing and all that stuff. And obviously that comes with a lot of, um, you could say judgment in different parties. Not necessarily, you know, people might say things, but family specific, specifically could see this as a certain thing. How are you dealing with family in this? Uh, well, my family in the Middle East disowned me. Oh, wow. And my dad, I haven't talked to him in a few years. My mom, she passed away last year. So I really just have my brothers, and they're all for it. I have six brothers, but I only talk to two of them. How about mom, dad, cousins, nothing? My mom passed away last year. Oh, wow. I'm sorry about that. My dad, I haven't talked to in a few years. Um, My cousins, they're jealous. They're jealous. I could just tell, because I try to make plans with them, and... Will be like in the same state, and then they'll like blow me off. Yeah, but they'll watch everything I do. Oh, you can see so it. So it's like <laughs> social nah, media ain't so private no more, right? Y'all motherfuckers is haters, and that's fine. Just because they're too pussy to go after what they want in life, 
That's not my problem. No, of course. You got to chase your dreams, right? Believe in you. Um, but, but now, of course, family is always tough, all this stuff. Um, there's a lot of things that might come with your, 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 your artist life and just you in general, right? Being a, a woman. How are your DMs? Let's talk about that. Because I know women have to deal with this on a day-to-day basis. But someone like you, how, how do you deal with it? I'm disgusted. Really? I'm cursing out motherfuckers day and night. Really? Yeah. Have you ever thought of a support team that just literally just takes care of that all day? A support team? Yeah, like, you know, an automated bot. My Instagram has <laughs> been hacked before, so nah. nah. I'm not giving anyone <laughs> the password. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. No, but that's crazy, dude. Like, a, a lot of people have to deal with this, right? But, um, yeah, man, social media is some disgusting place. Read us the craziest DM, DM you've ever had. No, I want you to hear my favorite DM. Let's oh, wow. hear it. Let's hear it. Wait, even reading. Why my my microphone keeps going in and out? Because you're not talking in front of it. Oh yeah, this is my favorite one. There you go. This is the fa- this is my best one. Okay. Wait, hold on. Oh, let me start over. Oh, here we go. Oh my God, Jean Mary, follow me back. <laughs> thank you, thank you, baby. I love you so much. I love you. I love you so much. I love him. I, I don't know. I don't know who he is, but can we talk about that day when you got that? Because you were in a in a different mood, and it that I like that just brought a smile back to your face. Yeah, because like you could just tell he's Arab, and like he's just he's just so sweet, and like I made his life, and I love that. So that's my favorite one. Um, I really dislike the ones where people ask me to see pictures of my armpits. Like that's, what? It's very often like every day I get armpits. What requests the? to see my armpits, and I really don't like my armpits, so it's like very annoying. Yeah, we've had a we've had a, a podcast with another group of girls who told us about you know OnlyFans, and they told them some crazy stuff. But armpits, what the fuck? That is completely new to me. <laughs> That's nasty, yo. <laughs> Why? Why an armpit? So anyway, I bought some whitening cream for my armpits. <laughs> Just in case um, they want to send me a couple grand to fulfill this fantasy. Jesus, funny. It's like those memes, you know, there's this guy asking to suck my dick if I buy him a burger. Can I get a burger? <laughs> <laughs> you never seen those memes? No. That's hilarious. You just you got me with that one, G. So what is the main philosophy of your music? Love yourself first. Fuck what they think. Fuck their opinion. The best opinion the best advice is no advice. Um, just like be authentic and true to yourself because fuck everybody. They weird. So the, the catchphrase is love yourself first because you can't, if your glass is half empty, you can't pour into other people. But if your glass is full, then, you know, you can pour into other people. Yeah, yeah. So you got to take care of you first. And that's what my music's about. Like, oh, he wants me. He better, like, pay all my bills first. Oh, she's a hater? Well, sucks to be her. I'm just going to keep being great. So, yeah. Cheers to that. Well, you guys have done a few music videos together. Um Let's talk about those. Um, Jose, what was your favorite project from G. Marie's uh, catalog? Uh, my favorite one is probably the Ha Ha Baby one because we got to travel and... Um, porcupine. Yeah, we touched a porcupine and camels. And a camel uh, hugged G. Marie. I guess that's what you could call it, hugged her. Hug. Hug. Like, the comments would say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that camel jerked her off. I don't know. But it it, it kind of was. That's what it was. But jerked what off? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> like, well, like, explain if you this. if you were a penis, the camel no was, jer- was jerking you off. That's what I mean. So it was a philosophical jerk off. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, weird. <laughs> but a lovely going camel. To hell. <laughs> Good. That's where I want to be. Uh, what's it called? A g- fucking amazing shoot, though. I lo- I loved everything about it. It was a beautiful day. I mean, I crashed my car, but other than that, it was worth it. It was awesome. It was awesome. I, I, it was excited. I remember this. It was a good yeah. video. It was you guys did a real good job with that. It was really exciting. But the best part was when we went after to STK, 
and we ate the best food. Yep. And we had the best drinks. Yep. STK. What is this place? STK. It's like it's a restaurant, but the one in Vegas is like really, really fancy, and, um, yeah, we ate really good steak. And we had really good martinis. I don't know. I, I'm maybe I'm just hungry, but that was my favorite <laughs> part. <laughs> no, it sounds delicious. I get that. Um, Vegas has some good food. That's something that I'll give to Vegas. <laughs> you could go to a lot of uh, nice uh, hotels, and they really got some choices. Remember those that uh, I think you had a um, kebab that day after after we wrapped up that shoot. Mm-hmm. That shit was bomb. That shit was. It, it was like it was a wrap up. It was the day after the shoot. Like uh, we were been shooting for like five days. We we're. Uh, Burnt out, <laughs> literally burnt out, and super burnt out. And instead of driving back, I decided to just fly us back, and we let, let the team drive back. So me and Jose stayed in Vegas for another night, and yeah, we had that lunch after we booked our rooms and we had a meeting. And then, damn man, I still remember that shit was fucking. That hummus was fire. I want some fucking hummus. Mm. Hummus. Is Quick delicious. question: Where have you had the best hummus? Not here. So, <laughs> of, of, obviously, trash. Really, not even not even close to one. Mm-mm. I'm, I've lived in Beirut. I've lived where they created it. Yeah, yeah, no, of it course. It's like it doesn't compare. It's like have. It's like you know, a Latin person. The tacos better in Mexico. Yeah, like it's not as good here. That's crazy talk. Yeah, it's it's just about the ingredients, really. But I don't know. I'm I'm from Florida. Florida has really good um, hummus here. Mm, it's I. It's I. I. I've tried some good hummus, but I could be a bad judge because I haven't had the best. Right <clears throat> now, I got to try the best because I love hummus with some nice pita. Damn, I'm hungry too. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. we have. Um, do you have new music coming out? Anything exciting coming up that we should know about or keep an eye for? Yeah, I have a song called "Sugar Baby." Oh, really? And it's it's like very pop. It's giving very much. Dua Lipa. Um, it's very exciting. I don't know what we're going to do for it yet, but the song is a fucking banger. Damn. Like, it belongs on the radio. Well, we're, we're, that's the goal. No, that's not the goal. I don't give a fuck about the radio. <laughs> but it but belongs. It belongs on the radio. Gotcha. It should be on rotation. Yeah, I don't, I don't care about the things that other people care about. I care about my music being in movies, and that's... I got two um, placements this week for two movies. Oh, really? So, like, that's my dream. My dream isn't, like, to be on the radio. So, soundtrack. hmm Nice. Like, timeless. What, what's your favorite soundtrack? Mm, good question. There's I like lot. Save the Last Dance. Yes, that's a good soundtrack. That is a really good soundtrack. It's R&B, a lot of R&B. I know the soundtrack. Um, is there any originals on that? Uh, there's a few. Don't stop, kid, get it. That's me. Don't stop, make it hit it. That's Don't real. I'm it. gonna do Don't it. Do I'm it. gonna do Don't it. Don't do it. <laughs> was that made for that movie? It was not made for the movie, no. But it was part of the soundtrack. You can oh. do it. Put your back into it. Oh. There was another one that has a really good soundtrack. Is uh, Honey. Remember that movie? Honey is a good soundtrack. Yeah, that's that's a really good soundtrack. But my favorite, I, I'm pretty sure you guys won't recognize this. Uh, Daft Punk did a soundtrack for Tron Legacy. Oh, movie. Yeah. That soundtrack was banging. The whole album was made for the movie. Amazing. All all Daft Punk. I love Daft Punk. They did some crazy shit there. I remember I, I still play those songs. But right. then you know, but they're, they're they're the cinematic versions are longer and stuff, but good soundtrack. But yeah, a honey, um Save the Last Dance, definitely a good one. What else what else you got? I don't know, there's so many. What's your favorite kind of music to make? I love to sing because rapping is hard. Like, rapping is very hard. Singing is so much easier. When you rap, you have to, like, hit certain, like, people think it's easy. It's not. It's harder. Yeah. I don't know. You have you have to, like, hit these certain. It's the deliveries. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and then every rapper has different deliveries, too, which makes part of who they are. No, I agree. Rapping is hard. But singing is hard. Singing's easier. If you have the gift, because that's the difference. You got to have the gift to sing. Yeah, but I feel like the more I rap, the the, the worse I become at singing. So maybe I'm going to stop rapping for a little bit. 
They got a little R&B album. Would you ever sing in another language? Yeah, I sing in other languages. Yeah, I sing better in other languages. It, your tone changes, you know that? Like your, your your actual tone of your voice changes as the language you speak. I think I'm better in Arabic. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What do you got in Arabic? What's a good song in Arabic? Um, There's so many. I might sing as one. Okay. Enlighten us. Wow. I got an idea for you. What is it? Make an album with a song in every language you can speak. Okay. That How many be- languages can you speak? Five. That's five oh. tracks. Do two for each song. Ten, ten tracks. Boom. That's too many tracks. All right, five. Like call it, call it, call it fucking five. Yeah. Five. Worldwide. Yeah. Go on tour. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> good idea. I think so. I mean, I'd be I think it's a good idea. A French song. What do you speak French? No. no. What I else don't do like speak? French. I would love to learn how to speak French and Chinese for some reason. Chinese mm-hmm. is disgusting, ugly as hell. I don't want to learn either. <clears throat> but 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 I feel like it'll be useful. Chinese is the future language of everybody, so respect uh, it. Unfortunately, that's unfortunately. such a lie. Nah, it's, it's, no, pop, it it's population wise. There's more people that speak Chinese in the world than any other language. I'm okay. Yeah. I, I just would think for business reasons, it would be a smart decision. Mm-hmm. French is to me is just sexy. Bonjour, you know, saying it right. Oh, it is not sexy. I think it is. I think it is. I think a lot of girls think it is too. Je <laughs> m'appelle Oh damn! No, German. I don't like it. German yeah, is not so like aggressive. German either. German is aggressive. Like if someone speaks German, I feel like they're like yelling at me. They could be saying something sweet, but they're like just yelling at me. I don't like German. That's just scary. Yeah. I think I would be intimidated by a German speaking woman. Bullshit aside. It's scary. A German speaking woman? Yeah, like if she comes Well luckily sp- I brought one. Come on, Helga. Oh damn, fuck. <laughs> Get in here, Helga. That would be hilarious. Helga is such a German name. I know. <laughs> That's such a German name. Off the top of the dome. Yeah, just Helga. It sounds scary. Isn't that a character in Matilda? It's whatever you want it to be. No, but there's a character <laughs> named Helga. Yeah, you're probably right. But where? Now I'm going to be thinking about it. Hey, Arnold, there's a character named Yes, Helga. yes. That's the girl. And she does look German. She got that uni brown. Yes. <laughs> Damn. That maybe it was People like think a, I'm German. Nah, I don't see it. Because I, I'm tall. I, I, I completely see a little bit of some kind of Arab in you. I saw that since the get-go. Obviously, when you started using Habibi, I'm like, okay, boom. <laughs> you know? That was a straight giveaway. I just didn't know exactly where. Lebanon. Uh, I work, uh, um, like, my colleagues are from Jerusalem. So all my colleagues. Jerusalem? Yeah, all of them. They live in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv? Yeah. They're Jews. Yeah, straight yeah. Jews. Totally opposite. Yeah, I mean, sorry. They kill each other. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is this that part of that division wall? Yes. Oh, no way. Yeah. You know what we're talking about? I respect the Jews. I respect the Jews. The Jews are, are overlords, just <laughs> no, so no. they know this. I work for Jews. I mean, I got nothing against Jews. but I have but, nothing against Jews. I'm just saying, like... Yeah, there's a big war. That's like you saying... Damn, that I don't really have another example. Like, China doesn't imprison a lot of the civilians, because they don't. <laughs> they, don't. <laughs> they don't do that. We're getting they re educate the, the conspiracy theory... Uh, uh, topic today Jose take it away I don't know another example but you're talking about two places that don't get along but they're close to each other they're next to each other yeah so it's like to, like that's why yeah you know, it, it was like an idea of like you know like we're Latinos we're all different countries but we're like all Latino yeah, yeah. but no like they're Ju- they're not Arabs what are they I don't know but they're not Arabs or what you call they're Israelis Israelis there we go that's and like word. also two like, when I lived there, I used to help, uh, like, refugees for this, like, charity. And it was really bad. Like, constant bombing every day. Like, um, they would make sure that any Arabs on their land didn't have, like, just basic human rights. Right. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, it's unfortunate, but... It's pretty bad. It's been going on for decades there. Yeah. That's why they call it the Holy Land. Yeah. It's crazy. Now, if people just gave up religion... <laughs> oh, damn. And we got rid of Christianity... <laughs> Well, I think we could face all that. There's there's a lot of things we should do as a humanity that we're not doing, but the eradication of religion could be the first step. Let's talk about oil. Stop the oil. Nah, <laughs> no, I love religion. I love all you guys. Sorry. Um, he's a liar. <laughs> which <laughs> he's lying through his teeth and don't believe that. He doesn't love you. I love every single one of you. Your soul. Would you ever put uh have do you have any Arabic songs? Yeah. How many? Out yeah. On the interwebs? Yep. Like, uh, I mean, I have maybe like two, yeah, two or three. Nice. Mm. We should make an EP, just those three songs. Why? We release. People need to hear these songs. I'm not like an EP kind of person. Hey, but you know, you kind of feed the people. The people need this content. I'm like, every every song has its own story and concept and idea. You know, yes. and all my songs, like, they're all good enough to stand on their own. So, like, I feel like you make an EP when there's, like, those stragglers. Mm -hmm. I don't have any stragglers. So, you, most of your songs are singles. Like they're, yeah, they're created to be singles. They're mostly singles. Got it. Okay. So, now now when we're talking about this multi-language album, that'll be an album. I don't know. Like, it that'd depends. It's also be uh, about what you're singing about. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter if it's in a different language. Mm -mm. We just want to deliver a message and in, in a picture, in a sense. In a video. Well, yes, yes. Like, it's the whole vision. It's like the song and the vision of the visuals. Yeah. It's a whole package. Yeah. A single package. We'll see. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But doing singles is, is uh, creatively freeing, freeing, you know. You, you don't have to stick to it. No, no set standards or agenda or concept. Mm -hmm. Everything is a new page. Mm -hmm. Pretty dope. I, I could dig it. Well, Jose, now, how has that been for you, making all these visions, uh, uh, you know, and these concepts reality for Mrs. G. Marie? Oh, it's it's hella fun. It's one of the best uh, kind of like creative spaces because it's just so much freedom and we just get to do whatever we feel like doing. And a lot of times, sometimes that's, uh, that's I guess, what do you call it? That's led by our circumstances. Mm -hmm. So for f like, if she hit me up and she said, okay, we got to do something tomorrow. And, and she says, all I have is my Porsche and my apartment. Trust me, we'll make a badass video to yeah. that. Easy. Yeah. Real it's easy. But she needs to have good hair. <laughs> I can't seem to get good hair. It, it's tough, and especially with long shoots. You, you know, it I gets out of like control. I'm just going to dye it black at this point. What? What was what, wrong with the blonde? Are you over it? No, it's just like no one can get it right. Oh, I see what you're saying. I could tell you. I could show you people. Ooh. No. Trust. I, there's some girls here that, that I know that work for celebrities. You're looking at one. Oh, my point exactly. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's just something someone dumb would say. But no, no um... So in that sense, do you think uh, the mom video was one of the easiest to film because you had a mask on the whole time? That's my favorite video. <laughs> well, you hate your, do you like hate your hair in all the other videos? Pretty much. But that's like a thing. Every woman's going to go through this. Like, even if you love your hair today, you're going to hate it like in a year from now. No, that's not true. Do you still love the hair you had back in, like, say, high school? No, like, if you look at... Um, yeah, my hair in high school was great. What? No, <laughs> Okay, so she remembers. She remembers. <laughs> No, it's just, like, it's hard to find a good hairstylist. Like, in my uh, shake video, I think I had all wigs, and then it looked pretty good. But then, like, I don't know. I'm just not a fan. You, I get it. You're seeking perfection, always. Yeah. Yeah, but it's tough. I mean, sometimes you just got to run and gun it. Okay, I just want to say cheers to living positive and testing negative. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's very smart. Yeah. Remember, kids, test every six months. I at guess. least. At least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> test every time you have sex, bro. <laughs> oh, damn, with a different partner. <laughs> or if you, no, if you think she's cheating, one. too. Uh, yeah, even the same one. You never know. 
if, or, if, or if you think she's cheating. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get chlamydia from your girlfriend. Oh, oh dude. God. That's just, oh, God. So we have a funny story about that. My, my microphone just went off. <laughs> Hello? There Hello? Barnaby? Okay. Yeah, so there's this guy that really likes me. And I would like him. He's a pretty decently good-looking guy. Okay. He's nice. He's one of those sparkly straights? No. <laughs> no, he's just decent. Okay. You know, like just a nice arm candy. But then he told me that he... um. Got chlamydia from his ex-girlfriend. And then he proceeded to still ask me out to dinner. Why would he start with that? If you're watching <laughs> this, I love you. Bro. But I probably won't suck your dick. Like, it won't. Damn. Should have never said that, bro. Yeah, bro. Should have kept that one to, to yourself. yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get, get that shit taken care of, you know, and damn. Yeah. You blew that? Yeah. And I think, like... As time goes by, I love myself more and more. And then I realize that these dudes, they aren't shit. Like, I never I never think I'm better than anyone, you know? I treat everyone with the same level of respect. But let's be fucking real. These dudes, they don't have shit to show for their life. Yeah. A lot of them don't have a car. A lot of them don't have a, their own place to live. A lot of them don't even have just, like, home training, like, manners. Like, all they know how to do is text W-Y-D. Bitch, what the fuck do you think I'm doing? I'm working. I'm grinding. I'm out here. I'm tired. This dating game is whack. Yeah, but well, let's welcome to L.A. I need someone to come show me a real good time because I'm not here for a long time. I'm taking applications in the DM. Don't be nasty. Okay? <laughs> Don't get chlamydia. <laughs> Damn, you shouldn't, you shouldn't even have to say that. That's so crazy. Dude, you got to tell them. You let them when know. T- when I heard that, I was like, I've never heard this before. Like, I don't think I know anyone. Or maybe they just didn't tell me, but I was very shocked. Jose is the first person I told. I literally, I literally f- heard this information and I had to call Jose immediately because it's just too much. I was like, "This is too much." Yeah, that's nasty. <laughs> Why did he tell her? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get at. What was he trying to get? Like bonus points for being honest. Honest, you can, you can show that he's a good person like that. You know, isn't that what you call a simp? Isn't that what they he call is them? a simp? That's oh, why okay, I was okay. gonna give him a chance. I didn't know the definition. I like simps. I don't like guys that think like they're too cool. But that's part of LA. Like literally, that's like eighty five percent of the hey, population. But be, be honest though, uh, who are the people who have broken your heart the most though? Isn't it always the guys that are always too cool? No, it's never no. Really? What is it then? No, it's the guys that they love me, but they can't commit because they have all these demons and issues. Insecurities. Yeah, like they they love me and like we have a great time and we fall in love, but then they know they're not good enough for me. And I support that. I support that. <laughs> that is messed up for your self esteem, bro. <laughs> you gotta be you gotta chill lightly if you're gonna mess with Jean Marie. <laughs> She'll break your heart and your self esteem. <laughs> no, he said people that break my heart. Yeah, you just broke his heart too though. That was It's cruel. true. They tell me. Damn. You know, this one guy told me he was like I was like, listen, you're acting really funny. Just don't hit my line anymore because you're bullshit. Like, I don't have time for you. Damn. Because, like, inconsistent. Yeah. And then, you know what he told me? He said, you make me feel bad about myself. You make me feel insecure because I'm nowhere close to you in life. You know, I've heard that before. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, but that's not true. You don't know what I have going on. And also, like, anything can change tomorrow. So you have a negative glass half full mindset. So therefore, I can't fuck you because I can't have negative dick inside me. Damn. How poetic. I love that. Can't have neg- negative dick inside you, dude. There's negative pussy out there, too. Yeah, careful. no, there's definitely. Be careful. You can't do that. You can't be around people like that have low vibration mindset. Everything, like it doesn't matter what's going on. If you can think it, you can achieve it. So that's why you have to be around people that are like 
really big dreamers and doers, not anyone that like, if they ever tell you like, oh, your little project, your little job, they're not your friend. Yeah. Yep. They're literally your enemy. You should always surround yourself by people who are, are doing better than you or not even doing better than you, but are also seeking like, you know, to do the same things as you like achieving greatness. Yeah, I've heard much. this like philosophy that they say uh, uh, 60% of your friends should be the people that you want to be like, you know, 30 should be the people percent that you are in your level. You could say, or you could, you could find similarities with, and then 10% should be those that are beneath you. Like, I just don't agree. I, I, this is like some book, some book shit that I read, but um, I, I see what they're saying. I'm not saying it's like a standard, but yes, surround with people, Surround yourself with people that make you better. I used to be um, in like a lot of the metal scene and stuff, and I've I've always been this kind of creative. And pretty much uh, back in those days, I was the only one doing music videos in the scene. Everybody was like too cool for it, right? And and they would like laugh at me when I was like in college, like you know, studying for what I needed to do and stuff like that. And you know, I had to get away from that. And I was like the singer of the band and everything, and I loved being in it. It was dope as fuck. Yeah, but. Dude, just that mindset was draining. Yeah, no, I get, you get you. me. I get it. I get it. I get and now, it. and now, look at them. They're, you know, playing their shows to six people, getting 150 views a video, and I'm here with Jean Marie getting a million views. <laughs> yeah. You know, We're not, a video. 11, one, not 11, one, not 11, 11 million, not two, 11, not three, and more than that. <laughs> but also, what I want to say too is like, it's not always true because I had a best friend, and like she had everything, like. She had, she was rich as fuck and very popular. So, like, to me, I thought she was doing better than me because she had more money. She had a nicer car. She had nicer clothes. So, I wasn't mad about it, though. Like, good for her. Like, of course, I want to be around people doing better than me. So, I thought. Yeah. But I, I realized after, like, a year or two, she was sabotaging my life. She would get in between all my relationships she'd cause problems for me and i realized that it doesn't matter how much money she has or how successful she is she's jealous of the way that people love me and the confidence i have and so it didn't matter how nice her car was or how you know how many designer clothes she had like she didn't feel good about herself yep yeah so for her i was doing better because i like myself more yeah exactly well that that's another another thing and the you know people who are quote unquote doing better it's not only a material thing yeah. it's an internal thing you get me it's a happiness so thing. you're doing better than her in like internally you get me like you're good about yourself but she wasn't so even then, you know, like you got to look out for people with material stuff and you got to also look out like how they're doing, you know, how do they treat others? Yeah. Like, do they treat others good? And do they get happy for others? That's a, another thing that I see too. Like, like people who say like, you know, that they're nice or whatever, but when somebody's doing better, they're not happy for them. They like to say a little yeah. remark. Oh, but they're like, this. oh, but they're like that. As, and then I know others that when you tell them, hey man, like I just did this, they're like, dude, that's fucking awesome. awesome. I'm so happy yeah. for you, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. You gotta have support. You gotta see what people's, it's, uh, what do you call it, intentions are, right? Not everybody has the same intention, especially here in LA. LA is a dirty yeah. ass city, dude. Dirty city. Yeah. And also, like, I think of it, I'm happy for the next person because if it can happen for them, it can happen for me. Yeah. And that's how you have to look at it. Like, it's their time right now. Or it's my time right now, and that's fine. Yeah, like your time is gonna come. It's about having the opportunity and seizing it. Yeah. yeah. To me, I see it also as like, if one of your teammates is elevating, you're elevating. Mm -hmm. You get me? Like we're all elevating together and shit. Yeah. Like when my friend is doing better, that means I'm gonna do better too. Yeah. You get we're me? Support system. Yeah. You know? Wow, that's what I just said. <laughs> ah, <laughs> but I said fine. it in a guy version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, like bro, bro, <laughs> bro, speak, bro. <laughs> Totally fucking awesome. Bro. Jean Marie, a little girl comes up to you in the street. She looks up at you. Of course, she's going to look like, damn. She looks up at you. <laughs> she, said, she says, <laughs> damn. <laughs> and she says, what do I have to do to be like you? What do you tell her? You don't want to be like me. Wow. <laughs> That's wise. You always want to be yourself. Yeah, you want to be yourself. But I tell, I mean, a little girl came up to me in Santee Alley. Uh, like uh, two weeks ago and she recognized me from TikTok. I thought that was cool. But 
Yeah, I would tell them, don't be like me. Be like you. Yeah. Like, you're special, you're creative, you're cool in your own way, and you don't need to be like me. But if you want the confidence I have, or, you know, that's it's a job. It's an internal job that you have to do every day. It's a battle. A constant battle. I wouldn't say a battle. I pretty lo- I love myself a lot. It's pretty easy to do. But I would say it is work, you know? Yeah. What does that work consist of? Um, well, when I wake up, I meditate. I stay away from a lot of people. You know, a lot of times I get invited to stuff or people want me to come here, come there. I just say no because... My energy is sacred. Yeah. Like, really protective of my energy. It's also what you eat. You know, you got to eat really well. And what else? Really just doing the things you like to do. You have to be doing what you like to do. If, you, if you're if you doing a bunch of things you don't want to do or you're around people that you don't want to be around, you're not going to be happy. So you have to just do what you love to do. So every day I practice doing what I love to do. Oh, uh, I think one thing that that I see her doing every day, uh, what's it called, and that I don't see from a lot of people is the consistency. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, to her, it's just so second nature that she doesn't realize that it's, she she's consistent every day, and we plan every day, almost every day, about the next few months. Yeah. You get me? And we check off some things, and then it's like, okay, now we got to do this. Now we got to do that. Like, every day is another another little, you know, set of things that we have to get done, and we have to get, uh, get it done ASAP, like... Like she said one time, if I don't post one day, people think I'm dead. Like, can you say something like that? <laughs> like, it's true. It's yeah. consistency. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'll get like so many phone calls if I don't post. I mean, it's concerning. Jean Marie's always active. It's part of her ethic, her work ethic. Yeah, but I think that's also what brings her that like success. Because there's a lot of people who uh, want to be famous or they're like, why aren't I, you know, more out there? Yeah. I'm like, bro, well, you're not putting yourself out there. You know, you're not allowing your audience to connect to you. You know, you got to put yourself out there and be make it consistent. You know, mm-hmm. it's about being a little vulnerable in a sense. You know, you got to open up in a sense. Welcome. <laughs> That's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, G Marie has that work ethic. We all know this. You, we see it uh, day after day, music video after music video, song after song, single after single, and then a lot more to come. So, what else is there to come? Um, well, I have two songs coming out in movies. I just recorded them, so nice. look out. I can't say which ones. Unreleased? Yeah, but it's net, one is a Netflix movie, one's a Universal movie. And uh, what else? I'm just letting things come as they come. Any big goal for this year? I already, I already like got it, my goal. It's only March. I know it, it's February. Yeah, I mean, it's the end of March. The end but of February, yeah, my so goal, my goal was to get some movie placements, and I definitely want to start acting. So, um, so yeah. that's the next step, acting. Yeah, I think I'm the next Uma Thurman. Oh wow! I'm the next Katherine Heigl. I'm gonna whoop everyone's ass. <laughs> I I love to be the villain. I think it's very suitable. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, you could definitely see it. I can see nah. it. Definitely see it. Definitely see it. One hundred percent little henchmen around her too and they must be like a certain height too you know (laughs) i'm fucking dead yeah yeah literally it's to portray power you know three little midgets not even midgets that's the worst part dude (laughs) three average size men (laughs) that's where we got three average size men you know on each side fuck you and her in the middle (laughs) boom movie (laughs) call the next aston powers what was that gold member no no not gold member no gold member that is totally you that is totally you dude that is a perfect fit who would you beat up in a movie? Who would I, who would I beat up? Yeah, because you're the bad guy. So who's your, who's your, who's your enemy? Vil, uh, who's your enemy? Yeah, yeah. Who's yeah. your villain? Or whose enemy are you? Like a, like maybe I'm like a dominatrix, and there's like a corporate guy on Wall Street, and I just like start whipping him to death. So it's it's a horror film. <laughs> no, it's action. No, I didn't know action. That's definitely horror. That that sounds like a horror film. How? Like he, you know, you, you start off with a guy, you know, just normal. He's corp- a corporate guy. Yeah. He's stealing from people all over the yeah, world. Yeah, but I could picture the movie. You get me? I could picture the movie. It's just literally him. You know, you get to know him in the beginning, and you think he's nice. That's the first scene. Exactly. I'm doing it multiple times. Oh, it's I'm a serial killing- killer movie. I'm telling you. No, but horror. I'm killing all the real bad guys. That's horror. <laughs> but like I'm the villain, 
but I'm the underdog. You're Jigsaw. I want to play a game. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. See, I'm killing people for just causes. Like, cool. literally Jigsaw, bro. Do you like, think I'm you, Gryffindor? Do you think you could could go in a fight scene with The Rock? Damn. I'd rather go in another type of scene. <laughs> <than The Rock. laughs> Love interest. Yeah. The Rock. I was actually on an episode of Ballers, and we were staring at each other for quite a long time. I probably could be married to him right now. But I'm sure he wouldn't let me have this career that I have. He seems a little bit domineering. Yeah, definitely. He's, he has an image, so he'd probably want to be like... Also, like, his wife, like... I mean, she looks like me when my hair is brown and, like, same height and stuff. But, like, she doesn't do anything. Mm. Uh, no offense, wife, but I don't think you do that much. <laughs> so, yeah. But, Rock, if you're watching this... DM me. Don't DM me. Just know that I love you. Ooh. Yeah, don't be one of those creeps that has chlamydia, please. <laughs> I'm never going to forget that, dude. I can't yeah. believe this guy did this, dude. This is crazy. <laughs> I can't believe it. Jose can't believe it. Mm. We're can't still shocked. It. Gene, you, you got a little bit of a documentary here. Just saying. Reenactments. Some, you know, bricks of powder, you know. We could call it, you know, baby powder. We so got- that's the next thing I want to do. Yeah, I can see it. Definitely see it. Pitch it to Netflix. I think we should do a documentary of my life, and I know all the places that we could that we could recreate it. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's there. Can we? Do you have different color hairs throughout this whole thing, right? Just black and blonde. So there it Mostly is. Mostly blonde. So we go back to black. Should those scenes? Ooh, dude, I'm telling you, there's a whole movie here. Yeah, my life is pretty crazy. Can we exaggerate? Can we throw some like gunshots in there? There was gunshots. <laughs> there was 20 guns Boom. to my head. Damn. Jeez. Kill Bill, they bro. They came out of a van. Holy shit. This is in Miami? Yeah. Wow. It doesn't need to be more dramatic. You just need more details. We need to hit the script. That's what we need to do. Yeah. I think the it's a bestseller. Yet. Yeah. So you want to do a book first? No. A best-selling video. A movie. I think we could sell it to Netflix. And I actually have the contacts to do so. But now if it's like a, like if it's a docu- I know all the producers over there. Is it a documentary or is it a movie? Well, I don't know yet. You can but, go either way. But all I know is that I'm young enough right now to be, pl- to, to play as myself and everything's really fresh in my mind. Yeah. Gotta start getting down on paper. That is my dream. You got this. I see it. Make your own soundtrack. Wow. Damn, dude. I'm over here spilling gold, dude. <laughs> no, it's crazy because I met some producers from Netflix on Tuesday. And I have all their information. Could easily pitch this. Could easily fuck these little these little coins. <laughs> we be getting millions from this Netflix. We're going we're gonna to sit on this. We're going to marinate on this, you know, before we cook it. I no, think we got. I don't need to marinate. I already got, I already got it. It's already brewing. <laughs> like little coffee. <sighs> okay, <I'm done. laughs> All right, y'all. A hoe's just going to be a hoe. Hoes are always going to be hoes. And like um, I believe my young friend uh, Corrupt said, don't make a hoe a housewife. <laughs> Wise words. She didn't make a hoe. Yeah, <laughs> you're a housewife. No, that's the better. You should idea. definitely make a hoe a housewife. <laughs> Why is that? Because then there'll be less hoes in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Saving one hoe at a time. Hey. <laughs> All right, Jose, take us away. All right. This was Jean Marie. Jean, thank you for coming along. Hope to be working more with you. We got five videos down, Just over five. what, like 15 million views? And we're only getting more every day. And counting. Mm -hmm. This was the A7 Podcast with another episode. Thanks for coming, guys. We'll see you guys soon. Bye, Habibis.